Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be doing a fun little science experiment. And to do this, we're going to get the D35 Beast because it's been a while since I've driven him, and I feel like driving him. And this this is a him. Some vehicles can be a she or a he. This is big masculine him truck. So, anyways, what we're going to do is we are going to compare crashes at different speeds. But the first thing we're going to do is a 50 mile per hour crash versus five 20 mile per hour crashes. And just for fun, which one do you think is going to be more damaged? Leave a comment and we're going to see if you guys are mostly right or mostly wrong. Because it may or may not match up with what you would expect to happen. So on this one, we're going to do five collisions at 20 miles per hour. And if you think about it, that's 100 miles per hour of total impact. So it would be double as damaged as the one at 50 miles per hour? Maybe, maybe not. We're going to figure out exactly what happens in a situation like this. So there's the first crash at about 20 miles per hour. Honestly, it barely even looks damaged. It can easily do four more, I would think. And I'll try to level out the speed. So I noticed the first two were just a little bit fast. So I'll do this next one a little bit slow. And that'll make it where the average speed is 20 miles per hour each. And then it'll equal 100 miles per hour in total. So that's number three, which means we've actually had more collision speed than the very first impact. And we're going to do two more. Now we're 80 miles per hour of total impact speed. And here is the final one. We're going to see if we can still drive after this. It does look pretty banged up. But it's... All right, we should still be able to drive this thing, yep. So we're gonna bring it back to the other truck and do some comparisons. And my initial impression is the overall amount of damage is very, very similar. You'll see they both have the hood pushed up pretty close to the same amount. It looks the same on both trucks. And then looking at the front fender, you see this one is obviously bulging outwards a decent amount. And looking at the 20 mile per hour truck, this one's also bulging out, but a decent bit more than the other one. But I would not say the 20 mile per hour truck is more damaged because if you look at the roof, you'll see there's a big gap between the door and the roof here. The roof has actually been bent, but on this one, there's a very, very minor bend to the roof on both sides. And there's not a very big visible gap, which you can see on both sides of the 50 mile per hour crash. So in reality, I would say the overall amount of damage between these vehicles is very similar, even though the speeds were so different. So now let's try this again, but this time we're going to use a different vehicle. This time we're going to use a couple of Legrands, which might break before we could actually finish the test since they are front wheel drive. But I'm going to cross my fingers and hope they can make it. So we'll do the first test at 50 miles per hour once again, if it'll reach that, and it will. 49 miles per hour, that is close enough. And on this one, you can see a lot of roof damage. It even goes all the way to the rear. That's interesting looking. So we're going to pull him out of the way. Should be a nice... Uh-oh, no traction. Come on, go. All right, there we go. He should be out of the way now. So now we're going to go ahead and do the 20 mile per hour crashes. Again, an identical vehicle. There is nothing different about this guy. Well, not until after we do the crashes. After we do the crashes, there will probably be some noticeable differences. Again, first crash, it looks like it keep going for a while. Didn't stand up as well as the truck. But to be fair, the truck is heavy duty, body on frame with like a bull bar on it. It's going to be durable. Poor innocent little Legrand, he can't take as much. I just hope he can finish out the fight and do all five of the collisions. And honestly, the way the front end looks right now, it looks like it could break at any moment. It looks like it's hanging on by a string, and we need to do two more of these. You better really be lucky, Legrand. Come on, can you put down the power still? Yes, we're scraping the whole way, but we can put it down. So final impact, this is number five. Let's see, will it be able to drive after this? Yeah, probably. I didn't see any messages come up. Uh-oh. Well, not exactly. If we go full steering lock, we can kind of move it. Yeah, that's really awkward. The only way to put down power is if you go full steering to the left or right, I guess. Maybe if we go forward, is that a little bit better? I don't know if it's better, but we can at least kind of control where we want to go. And now to compare them. This one, very different looking, actually, on the 50 mile per hour crash. You can see the damage throughout the whole vehicle, from the front all the way to the back window, as I mentioned earlier. But on this one, the damage doesn't really go past the front door. In fact, most of the damage doesn't go past the front fender. The damage on the front door is pretty minor, and the shape of the roof is very well held together. So the Legrand at 20 miles per hour held up way more than the Legrand at 50 miles per hour. In fact, 
I would say a 40 mile per hour crash would probably look worse than the one that just did five 20 mile per hour crashes. So we're just gonna do a little quick experiment and see if that's true or not. And by the way, you might have noticed this is a throwback map. This is the old grid map. I pulled that out just because it has a little more clearance to get up to speed where these blocks are, it feels like. The other one, you have some more stuff that you might accidentally bump into. So 40 miles per hour, right about there. Perfect. All right, well, we can still drive here. More drivable than the 20 mile per hour impact, but the visuals of the damage are very, very similar. You don't have the damage going all the way to the rear of the vehicle. It's only like up to the front door. So that's very, very interesting. Now I wish I could tell you, oh, well the reason why is because of blah, 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 blah. But I honestly do not know for sure. Cause logically you think, okay, force is what's important here. And the 50 mile per hour crash experiences half of the force overall as the 20 mile per hour crash, yet it looks worse. The only thing I could say is it's the way the materials rebound after an impact. So on a 20 mile per hour crash, the materials kind of rebound a little bit. So even though it has way more force, it's able to absorb it gradually, which makes it less damaged. That's just a guess. I can't, I don't know enough about physics to give you any other reason why that would happen. It was not a fluke. We once again have damage going all the way through the vehicle. Another thing that's actually impressive is how big of a difference just 10 miles per hour can make here. I mean, you look at these vehicles, they are both very, very damaged, but this one looks like it was in a much, much, much worse impact than the other one. Like, I would think it'd be like maybe a 50 mile per hour versus like an 80 mile per hour, not a 40 versus 50. It's just such a big difference from only 10 miles per hour. Science is fun. So now we'll remove everybody around me and we're gonna do one final test and this one's gonna be a vehicle on vehicle collision test and there will be some variety in the vehicles they'll all be sunbursts but some will be the jundemurdber and the other ones will be the police and we're just gonna line up some of them far away some of them closer I want to go to there's a nice big open area so that way I'm not smashing into the car which smashes into a wall I need to have a big wide open area all around the car to make sure nothing like that happens so like right about here should be good for that. And I'll go ahead and spin around the gender burn to her. And then I want to line it up so it'll be a head-on collision with the other police version. So that looks good. And then for the police, we're going to line them up, you know, roughly in line with the location of the gender burn to her. So right about here should be good. And now I'm going to clone both of them so we can do the collisions at both 50 miles per hour and... 20 miles per hour five times. So there's the clone of that one, and then here is the clone of the gentleman to her. And I'm gonna drive the police because it's faster and I'm impatient. So we should have no problem getting up to 50 miles per hour. You're already at 50 miles per hour. So we're just gonna coast it a little bit. And that was about 50 miles per hour, dead even on impact. So there's the damage there. And then now we gotta spend a little bit more time doing the multi-impact. And this one did not need to be so far away. This one could have been a lot closer, but that's okay. Cause you're going about 20 miles per hour. Just gonna let it roll on up. Perfect. I should also mention the gentlemen to hers all have their parking brakes on. So that way they don't just keep rolling forever after impact because that would change things quite a bit. That one was a little fast. That was 23 miles per hour. So this next one is gonna be very slow to compensate. Again, I'm trying to make sure it's an average of 20 miles per hour. So that one's like 16, so that's an average of 19 and a half. That's close enough for me. So that's three impacts. We got two left until we're done. There you go. That one was dead on 20. Doing better here. Every car, you kind of have to get into the rhythm. Once you're in the rhythm, you can hit 20 miles per hour every time it feels like. But every car is different, so it's hard to do. All right. That is five impacts. And on this one, it looks like the damage on the multi crash is going to be a lot less. So like this is the most damaged part of it. It's got some damage, sure. But if we compare it over to the 50 mile per hour crash, there's a lot more damage there. That thing is really bashed in. That's a pretty big difference compared to the test we were doing earlier where it was so comparable. How about the gentleman to her? So over here, got a decent amount of damage. On this one, a lot more damage. So once again, 50 mile per hour impacts look a lot more damaging and in this situation when you have a vehicle on vehicle impact it seems like since you have two vehicles that are able to absorb the impact 
it makes the overall damage on the vehicle much, much less compared to the 50 mile per hour ones. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys would be interested in seeing more videos like this where we do little scientific tests like that, do leave a comment because there are some other things I could do. I just don't know if you guys would be interested in that. But anyways, until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by looking at how damaged the car is. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.